Greetings in the name of the Most High, Yeshua, Son of God. Now, let us uh, indulge in just a bit of uh, Jesus. And um, I, I really... Uh, <laughs> I really need to get on with, uh, okay, that's where I want to go, right there. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Meaning that Jesus' words are the bread of life. And we, and we hear this, you know, repeated, especially in John. Um, this is Matthew, but especially in John where it says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you shall not see eternity. You shall not see the glory of heaven. You shall not enter in to the kingdom. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood... Again, and what and what was the what what was the working metaphor? That this is the last sacrifice, and the last sacrifice isn't of flesh and blood, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Every word. And as we know, that doesn't just refer to the Bible but the word one receives when encountering the scriptures, prayer, inspiration, that's, you know, from outside yourself, receipt of the Holy Spirit, consummation of the wedding feast after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is the three rings of marriage. I gave you this word yesterday. This was a word from the mouth of God. Marriage is three rings. The Bible is in three parts, beginning, middle, and end. What's the middle? Jesus. Well, you could say that's the beginning, middle, and end, but I mean that the advent of the Son of God upon the earth, right? The fulfillment of the Word. The Word made flesh. Actually, you know, in a sense... Uh, anyway, the, the, the light enters into the darkness and the darkness comprehends it not because darkness is dark. Darkness can only amplify the light. It can give contrast so that the light shines ever more brightly the darker it is, which is why I believe the world is the way it is. Because... How could we see the Son of God, the, who is also called the light? I'm emphasizing today because apparently there's some ignorance on this in the, in, in, among people that say they are believers, and I don't want you to get your head lopped off and not know what's going on. You know, if you're going to die for the faith, you might as well know what the faith is. What is it that you have to, to eat? to survive. Man does not live by bread alone. Why did John have to eat the little book? What is eating the book about? Living on the word of God rather than living on off the flesh, living off the land, living off the off food, living off shelter, living off water but rather dining on the Spirit. That's why people fast, so they can feast on the Spirit and not the flesh, to align and identify with the Spirit and not the flesh. Right? Because there's some ignorance on this point, I, I feel like I have to um, kind of be emphatic here because too many people have this idea that God is this distant thing and there is no feasting on the word there is no eating the flesh or drinking the blood 
Because eating flesh and drinking blood was a pagan ritual in the days of old. Oh, those pagans today wouldn't do something like that. Now would they? The lamb is also very symbolic. What's the lamb? The lamb is that which is sacrificed. The sacrificial lamb. What was the sacrifice during the Old Testament? Right? The sacrifice to the Lord God. Why? Why? The fatted calf, the fatted ram, the lamb. Why? Why, do you suppose? To offer God their best. Because animal husbandry was, right? And then, and then of course, it, it developed into crops. Give, remember, Cain tried to give crops, but God rejected it. He wanted, he wanted the fatted calf. Because that's considered better than just crops. They'll eat, uh, you know, wheat and make bread and, and grains. But it's the flesh that's cooked that gave the, the sweet savor of meat that's considered special. That's a special feast. You don't bring in grain for that. I mean, you have bread along with it, right? Like at the, uh, at the Last Supper, we have lamb and bread. Right? Why lamb? Because what's the blood of the lamb? What is the lamb? You know, it's amazing how we've been through this for years, but we uh, seem to have lost our way on this stuff. Lamb. It's in the innocent. Okay? A little lamb is an innocent one. You know, like a little Bambi. You know? But it's, it's an innocent one. You don't want to kill that lamb. Just a baby. What does a lamb grow into? A lamb grows into a sheep. So the lambs are little and the meat is good. Good for a sacrifice because that's the most precious, the little lamb. Right? That's the most innocent, the little lamb. The little lamb doesn't eat flesh eats grass, right? The little lamb, vegetation, whatever. Anyway, the, the point is, is that Jesus is the lamb, capital L. Then there's the wrath of the lamb. How can a, a lamb be wrathful? Lambs are innocent and sweet. What do you mean the wrath of the lamb? You mean the identity of the innocent one that was sacrificed? is really the Almighty God, i.e. the wrath of the Lamb. Holy smokes, what have we done? Uh, you won and you lost. Man lost, God won. Thank God. Man, another word for man is ignorant one. Ignorant one. Man is the ignorant one. He'll sacrifice God thinking he's getting a trophy. He's so stupid. Man is like the lamb. His legs have to be broken or he'll wander right off the cliff. So the shepherd must break man's legs, keep man tethered, because if man had the powers of God, I'm jumping all over the scriptures right here. If man had the power of God to be as gods and to be eternal, he would go tear up the universe and screw it all up, would he not? So keep him tethered here, hard. Upon the earth. You wonder why you're tethered here and why you can't see up in the firmament and all the questions you have about all the, the things going on in outer space and all the, are there extraterrestrials and are there, are there people on Mars and the moon and what about Sirius and all that? What about all these UFOs? You want to know about that? No, you're tethered here by God. You're not supposed to know about that stuff because see, we don't want you to have that technology because every civilization before you has perished in a holocaust because of it. Because man can't handle it, as it was said from the Garden of Eden and the expulsion. We must tether man, limit the years of his life, keep him from technology, lest he start becoming as gods, knowing 
knowing the sciences or good and evil, meaning the sciences. Right? Okay, let's just back up. What do I mean by that? What is science? It's the quest for dot, 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 capital T, truth. Right? That's what science is. So that's why I said that. Don't want to leave anyone in the, in the dust. It's, uh, you, no, it's fine. You know, it, it's fine. They're just, uh, apparently, people don't know this stuff. And it's kind of like, well, shoot, if you're going to sacrifice for the Lord, i.e. being you in this world, you receive persecution, right? Oh, no, you don't? But if you're you, separate from the world by Jesus, baptized by the Holy Spirit and, and sitting in the, in the hand of God on the earth, they're going to jump on you, right? No? <laughs> well, then I contend that you're still in the world. Because the minute he takes you, they jump on you. And they'll try to kill you. And they'll do all manner of things. And what you learn is you learn to rely on God you will learn to rely on the Lord and the Lord alone for uh, protection, provision, sustenance, health, um, lots of lambs of God have gone the AMA route only to wind up dead. You know, it's, it's the spirits that operate there are stronger than the doctors and the nurses. So what do those spirits want to do? They want to kill, just like Herod, all children of God worldwide. What's Obama doing? He's persecuting Christians by proxy through the, his, his Muslim brotherhood and killing them. He is a murderer. Uh, Barack Obama is, but then again, I guess you could make that case for most presidents. I don't want to make him more than anyone else. He's just the most dramatic example of uh, a total slave and uh, vapid. In other words, there's nothing, the, the same tape keeps playing around and around and around, and it's so boring I can't, I can't watch anymore because he's just like a broken record going around and around and around. The latest is, I'm going to be a dictator and do what I can with my pen because you guys don't respect me. Boo-hoo, you know, around and around. The same tape over and over as painting himself as a victim of some vast right-wing conspiracy. Around and around and around when the whole point is he's on the winning side of the satanic left. Oh, there's a satanic right too, but I mean, you know, basically... The push right now is basically Democrats who are communists and, uh, and all of them are at this point. So it's, it's because the ones who weren't have become independents. They have left the Democrat Party like I left the Republican Party to become what? I became an independent in New Mexico. So I think for myself. Uh, and right now there is, as I said yesterday, there's a huge push for Satanism. I mean, in income equality, which is Satanism, which is communism, which is Satanism. Communism is simply the external manifestation of structural Satanism, uh, which is very ordered and structured, which is also includes paganism and, and all that. It's all kind of included. The pagans don't really know the devil exists, a lot of them. Um, but the, the ones who run it and control all the pagans, they do. But that's okay. Most of the people that are, they think that they're smart, they say they're atheists, and the people that control them are all children of the devil and, and, and believe fervently and do rituals to the devil. Even if their followers or the ones they control are too smart for that sort of thing. You know, it's amazing the, the main thing I run into in, in life, whether it be Christians, uh, Buddhists, atheists, general people, is uh, incredible, uh, almost 
uh, you know, an incredible array of um, confusion and ignorance. I guess that's what it would be. The the bulk of people I I run into, they're okay in their little niche. You know, like if they're a store clerk or, a, you know, if they're you know they're 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 a, whatever their station is in life. You know, they seem relatively competent, you know, to, they've done a job for 10, 15 years and they, they know how to do that job and they know how to pay the bills and they know how to, you know, um, drive a car, let's say, and things like that and, and, and they have their circle of friends and they, they, it all seems okay until you start questioning, you know, what the hell is this? Why are you my friend? Who are these people? How do I, you know, like, like the talking heads, how do I get this house, how do I get this wife? Uh, I have, me, I've always asked those questions, of course, to the consternation of my parents, to, to an endless frustration of my, my, my family and aunts and uncles and whatnot. Uh, yeah, they, they uh, you know, they dreaded any kind of Thanksgiving dinner because I've always been like that, you know, like when I, when I drive the van, uh, I'd be the one that would drive with this other guy, our band, when we had that in the Midwest, and then I would, we drive all night back from wherever we gigged at. And the discussion the entire way was, you know, the nature of the universe and what was happening and, and you know, and, and, and all that, you know, and, 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 and this guy would always say to me, there you go again, you've solved all the riddles of the universe one, one more time. It's like, no, I haven't solved anything. I just, you know, what else is there to talk about? But, but, but that's the very thing that gets people mad because it puts a hole in polite conversation around the dinner table. Or and no, and I like to acknowledge nature too. I love nature and talking about nature. And the, I, but from my earliest memories, I used to look up at the sky and I'd wonder and I'd wonder. And the, the stars and the moon. I was fascinated with the planets and the and the and the and just the firmament in general. And so it's, it's always been like that. And um, I guess that really. Uh, got me sort of set apart as some crazy person or something because I wouldn't deal with anything other than that, you know. So when it came down to uh, general carnality, I was an idiot because I just, you know, was so completely out of touch with my body and my terrestrial, my terrestrial nature. And uh, probably because of, of trauma and whatever. Who knows what the reason is, but... You know, I mean, I, I don't look for a psychological reason. We are who we are. We're made the way we are. And we, our proclivities are, you know, the good ones, are, I believe, just designed by God. You know, you need so many people to do this, so many people. Not everyone can have their head in the clouds like me and be wondering about, you know, the philosophy of life and, and all the things about religion, philosophy, and all that. And I just went around and around and couldn't stop it. But, you know, then I, then I realized, the, 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 but basic spirituality 101 I, I mean, I see a lot of people un, misunderstanding everything. You know, the spiritual realm is the real realm. And this where we are now is a shadowy realm of illusion and delusion. And, you know, the only way through this one, this murky place where we are now, is uh, with the guidance of the Lord who will break your legs because you're just a little lamb, ignorant, and you'll fall off the cliff if you're given powers like these witches, they get powers by, they force it, right? They're generational witches, bloodline witches. They don't call themselves witches, but, you know, they're, 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 they're you know, Hillary Clinton or whatever. And, um, you know, that, that, that is terrestrial carnality and earth dwelling, i.e. moving around the people and the earth and the rocks and the, getting a spaceship and going somewhere and doing this and having money and, and, and ignorant and stupid and stupid and ignorant and Barack Obama is stupid and ignorant and nothing ever changes with these people. Would you like to go on a little boat ride, Obama? And play another round of golf, go to Martha's Vineyard, you know. And that's about the extent of it. Doesn't go any further than that. Yeah. Uh, Bush was, you know, pretty much the same thing. Oh, I think he was a little more philosophical. And Clinton was, you know, all about, uh, you know, sympathy for the devil. He was basically the devil. He was an antichrist. 
Bush, I believe, was an antichrist, and, and although he, he he was kind of split, he kept trying to go to the Lord, and then Billy Graham would handle him and get him back into uh, character, and then you know what I mean. It was just like a back and forth thing. Oh, these pastors, how they do it? They tell you it's okay to be you. You know what I mean? And it's okay to be. Don't change. It's okay to don't have the Holy Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit and go to church, the first thing to do is knock that crap right out of you. And I'm saying crap you know, as of sarcastically, but they knock it out of you. The minute you start speaking truth or you start, look, I drove, I got kicked out because I kept asking the pastor questions. I want to know everything. Don't you? Don't you want to talk about all this? I, that's all I want to talk about. And they don't. They want to talk about, um, you know, um, your lusts. And they want to, you know, maybe have an affair with some pretty girl or they want to go surfing or, you know what I mean? They're, that's, that's, a, they don't think about, it. they don't, there is no philosophical discussion to be had with all the pastors I've met. None. They're not interested. They're interested in how to control the flock, how to siphon off money and power off of them, and how to keep them uh, glued to those pews. Period. And I think that's such a disservice, and I think that's criminal, and I think those people should be thrown in jail. If this was, a, if we had a God out of jail, they'd be all in it. You know, the, the the church is supposed to be a place where the, you know, a gathering where the ecclesia, you know, uh, shares and prophesies and sings and prays and 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 you know celebrates God. It just puts the focus all on God, you know, and and just anyway. So the Lamb is the final sacrifice to God, but the sacrifice itself is like a metaphor because the lamb is a metaphor. You know, you know the, 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 the stone that is rejected is the stone of the corner. Man is 100% ignorant. That's why he is not allowed to live beyond 120 He's not allowed to, you know, basically round about there. You know, some people have gone longer, but that's about the, 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 the longest you can live. A very short period of time because um, they can't give man eternality because he will, you know, he will abuse it and destroy his own civilization with it. And look what they're doing now. The plan is to kill everybody and go merge with machines. They're doing the same damn thing that was warned about in the book of Genesis when getting kicked out of the Garden of Eden, which is why the cherub is there guarding the, the tree of eternity, the tree of life, guarding it with a, with a flaming sword to prevent man from getting access because man would be as angels then, you know. And then with the technology and stuff, he would blow the whole universe up because he's such an idiot. So because of man's stupidity, he must be tethered. He's allowed to learn a few things, but once technology gets to a certain place, God will destroy it, just like he destroyed, you know, with the flood. And then there was the pre-Adamic man that was destroyed as well at, in, a, in an outer space kind of war. And, um, you know, it's super high technology. And then, and then will be destroyed again. And it has to be pruned back. Because the whole point of man as a vessel is to translate or transform into this being of light okay into this pinnacle of God's creation out of and the physical is necessary for that progression to that point of the New Jerusalem okay where there's no more need of light or suns or moons or whatever you've you've kind of arrived and you know then there are the terrestrials who want to be reincarnated in this life and they you know they have some sort of recycling thing going and they trade in souls and they they, they like the 3D world of this. They don't mind time travel. They don't mind portals to other, other places, but they don't like other dimensions. They like this dimension, and they want to be young so they can exercise their lust and control and power and lord it over others, and that's basically the impetus of man, period. That's all it is. You know, I remember that Tears for Fears song, Everybody Wants to Rule the World. I think it was Tears for Fears. Correct me if I'm wrong for some of you experts um, everybody wants to rule the world you know there's a, there's a there's a sickness in man that wants to control other people 
a sick distant man. He can't control himself. So what, what's the next best thing if you can't control yourself? You want to control other people because you're ignorant about yourself. You, because if you focus on yourself really, then you realize you've got anxieties. You've got questions. You've got concerns. You're troubled if you're, if you're honest. And you need some help with your troubled, weary soul, don't you? And that would lead to the, in, the great inquiry, which then you would learn how ignorant you are, and then you would start learning via the Holy Spirit. And then as you learn more, you would learn to, th th that, you know, you that you're in a the flesh is like a cocoon, that you must blossom out of it like a butterfly. And that you learn that this is not your home. And this dimension is not your home because nothing remains here. Everything is transitory. Once you understand that everything is transitory, then you've got to figure out, well, then why am I here? Where am I going? You've got a short period of time to figure that out. And God wants you to have that, that as your focus so you can move on and progress in the Lord, in the Spirit. And you can't progress if you identify with the flesh. The thing you're going to do is try to get life extension technologies going. Try to beat God. Try to beat the cherub with the flaming sword. Try to beat the deal. And you can't beat the deal because God will just start hurling rocks at you. In other words, he will just burn it up, you know, like he did. He's done this several times. He's not going to let man get the hyper technology. He never has before and he, not, he will not now. The fallen angels, you know, can promise man the technology and they can give it to him to a certain extent and then at some point comes the smackdown. And then, you know, a little remnant survives and then another civilization is born, let's say, if, you know, if that's how it works. I mean, all we're supposed to really focus on is from, you know, Genesis to Revelation, that's about it. But uh, to me, I, I feel like this kind of thing goes on and on and on and on. It's going on every... It's, it's a constant thing, you know what I mean? It never ends. And yeah, as far as it ends, I don't believe it ever ends. God is a creator. He's going to always create it, never end. There is no ending to God's creation. But uh, the, the programming from the Bible, if handled the wrong way and very Western and very terrestrial, what ends up happening is people end up thinking there's a beginning, middle, and end, and nothing else, and then they, they want to identify with this world because that, that appears boring to them. They don't see that it never ends. They don't see that eternity is eternal, so it never ends. They don't see God as a creator and always has been, so he never stops creating, that never ends. They, they can't see all the uh, limitless outer space and limitless you know, kingdoms and limitless this and limitless that. You know, it never, it, it, it all the, you know, for example, all the parallel universe possibilities of you, they, you know, that, that all existed at the same time, never ends. It's infinite. And so without dealing with these questions, I mean, you know, they make a super collider not to ask questions of the universe, and it's basically to blow up the universe. They develop, um, you know, uh, uh, a laser weapon. What's that for? To put in the satellite so they can um, laser people from space enemies they don't like. They can get you from space. That, so they get to go beyond having a drone, right? They, it's just so far out. You just get zapped while you're walking down the street. You know, it's much more surgical without Obama's collateral damage, which he tends to, which he says he likes. Interesting how the uh, series Homeland, as I said yesterday, um, deals with one of Obama's drones killing a bunch of children and then the State Department coming out and saying, uh, don't believe the propaganda about children being killed. It made, it made the, the returning sergeant, the Marine, so angry that he joined the Muslims and he became a Muslim with the idea of destroying the United States because the United States is just this cruel, you know, the drone comes, kills a bunch of kids. Obama says he, he's out playing golf. This guy's completely, this guy has no clue. He's completely separate from any kind of feelings for humanity. I mean, that's the definition of a psychopath. So that's basically who's in charge of America because America is too stupid to elect anybody decent. That's what I see. When I go into town, I just, it's almost like I say to the Lord, I, I look at the Lord and I go, Lord, we're not even like them. How are we supposed to get along? 
you know, I tried to get into this football game thing, and I, I couldn't do that. And I've tried to do their, their rituals. I've tried to go to their schools. But it's always been the same thing. It's like, I don't, I'm over here, they're over there. There's never been a cohesion. And they all said, due to their ignorance, that it was my fault, rather than uh, appreciating that there are different kinds of beings. You know what I mean? So I carried the guilt around of being, you know, purposefully prideful even as I was trying desperately to, to, to mingle in. And, 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 and when it didn't work, I got blamed. The efforts to fit in were not rewarded. But rather, and then I was also mocked and laughed at like a laughing stock, you know, like my brother was. The weirdest thing, you know, and then, and then uh, you know, that, that was like, you know, they, they, they laugh at you because you're, you know, some kind of a nerd or a misfit or, or whatever. And uh, the, the bullying, gang stalking, let's talk about that for a minute. Um, the gang stalking has, you know, even though it's, it's mainstream now, I mean, the, the, the IRS is gang stalking, you know, the, the, the FBI has been sicked on, you know, people that are conservative, who, people that would stick with America have, are now being gang stalked because they're politically incorrect. To, uh, let, me, let me just go through the list of people that are being gang stalked right now. Okay, people who have morals, all right? People that believe in marriage. People who believe in God. People who believe in telling the truth, you know, when, when asked, and then, and then, you know, people that believe in repenting for their sins. These are people who are being targeted. Okay? Uh, and they're being targeted because, you know, the people that are in charge... Uh, the ethos of their culture is psychopathology. That means let's let's go over what a psychopath is because this is who you're, this is what you have to become if you want acceptance in their club. Number one, you do evil things and laugh about. It. In other words, no empathy for other people. That's that would be, you know, one of the main tenets of joining them. Um, able to drone things and drone children and whatever, and then go out and play golf. That would be a a key element to it. Um, sicking, uh, you know, military assets on your political enemies or, you know, translates into, if you want to join them, uh, being ruthless enough to sick whatever power you can wield on your enemy. In other words, punishing your enemies and rewarding your friends. You know, this is kind of a criminal ethos. And, um, and, and, and morals be damned. That's the culture today, and, and it was brought in by Obama and the Chicago, you know, way of the Chicago mob. And, and so basically the mob is a psychopath, right, because they're criminals, they have, you know, no morals, no, you know, they, they, they put people under insurance, and then if anyone disagrees, they, they get rid of them, they, they punish them, they kill them, they, they remove them, they get them fired, they, uh, and that's, you know, and then they want to lock down the globe, put people in chains, Move them out of California, rack them and stack them, and um, that's their idea of uh, nirvana. You have got to laugh at people like that. Come on. You know, Obama goes, well, a little respect. I would never respect a guy like that. Any more than I would respect, you know, the devil. I have no respect for the devil other than, you know, he's powerful and, and, and to be respected as a force of, of evil and a force of, of power, Sure. You know, that, that form of respect. But, I mean, in terms of, you know, uh, having a mano a mano kind of respect, like I would have a respect for a fellow brother in Christ, let's say, there's just, uh, there just wouldn't be that to someone that operates as a criminal and a petty, you know, petty and who doesn't care about children and doesn't care about people. And then they elect him after he goes around bragging about killing people and they elect him again because he says he's going to help the middle class while he's destroyed it. He's going to help the environment while destroying it. He's going to help business while destroying it. And he's done this with everything. In other words, he's completely double-minded and a uh, total liar and, uh, you know, unreliable and doesn't, you know, and will do whatever's politically expedient at the moment 
and has no plan, no vision, no future, no ability to negotiate with people, no ability to negotiate with Congress. You can't respect a guy like that. He was un unqualified for the job. He's just there because the commies want to bring in their communism by brute force, kill a bunch of people, but they have no plan after that other than to be elites and lord it over the people, make sure there's no, there's no um, food on the shelves. That's another thing they love to do. They love to have people become cannibals and starve in the street while they're living up with caviar and vodka or whatever. Yeah, okay? I mean, this is who America elects? This is what, who Sean Penn touts? I saw him in a movie yesterday. Pretty good. He's a good actor, you know. But um, he's not very bright. And, and he, he's even admitted that publicly, that he wasn't very bright, because he thought that Hugo Chavez was actually um, elected. And he isn't. He's the same uh, mafia that represents Obama. It's a mafia of criminals. And um, the, the, what Chavez did would take over the country it was a criminal takeover of Venezuela. He was not duly elected to anything. And Obama is a criminal, and he's a criminal takeover of America. I mean, you know, if you want to get straight, you have to arrest the, the, the politicians, the bankers, the, these lawyers, all these sleazy people. I would just say put a fence around Washington and arrest them all. You know, let, let the few good ones go, you know, five or six. And the rest of them put them there under, under detention. That would be the fastest way to clean it up. But yeah, they should be arrested. Just, I mean, if criminality is wrong, I mean, now criminality is rewarded. But if, it, if it's wrong, then um, the people in Washington, D.C. should be arrested, most of them. And I would just detain them without trial. I'd, put, I'd create another Gitmo for them and just never have a trial. You know, they would just be there forever. Uh, because I don't believe there is any rehabilitation when you're a, a sociopath. And I guess politics attracts sociopaths and psychopaths. In other words, they get elected, they forget about their constituents, they do their own thing, they take money under the table, they burn assets like Benghazi, and, no, and, and get rewarded for Hillary Clinton, who uh, burned the assets in Benghazi along with Obama and a few others, uh, is going to be running for office and people cheer her like a rock star even though she's a, a murderer, uh, unrepentantly so. And then Obama gets cheered uh, after droning kids. I don't understand these people in America. You know, I walk around and I'm like, get away from me. Get away from me. Evil piece of crap, get away from me. I don't like you because you're a murderer by proxy. I don't like murderers. I don't like criminals. So get away from me. And, you know, it's infecting more and more people who are going to the dark side and becoming criminals themselves. And it's infected law enforcement, the FBI, CIA, all these agencies, uh, IRS, and everybody else. And I'm like, God... Can't a, a, a kind of a normal person exist without being attacked? You know, who has, you know, you know, you know morals and, and uh, wants to live by them, wants to have a set of rules for everybody, you know, the, a rule of law for, for, for people, not exemptions for, for buddies and cronies. You know, because the administration now is completely illegal and 100% criminal. Isn't there anyone to arrest them? No, because all the people that could arrest them, they're in the same boat too. Remember I told you about all this. I told you about this in L.A. When I was a kid, how everybody was in on it. The police, the, everybody. Right? There was no justice and there was no rule of law in L.A. It was all the old boy network. The whole thing. And that was way before I was born was it like that. Uh, just go look at the movie L.A. Confidential or look at the newer one with Sean Penn called Gangster Squad. That's exactly what it was like. You know, there was no rule of law. There never has been in L.A. It's all been glad-handing and, you know, greasing. You know, say, okay, so Washington is a much bigger example than Los Angeles. Right? 
In fact, the whole world's like that. Everything gets greased. If you can't grease it, you ain't getting in. You know, and it's all run by this little club of, you know, banksters, lawyers, politicians. <laughs> laughing, plotting what they're going to do next to the people who they need for their power. And that's the world you were born into. Now, aren't you glad to know that so that you don't join a political party? Aren't you glad to know that so you don't buy in to belonging to something that is in itself hell-bound? Aren't you glad that you are free because of the truth that has set you free? Aren't you better off knowing the truth even if you're surrounded by the people that are ignorant, obviously, and on the other side? Because they don't realize that they're, they're the next to go. Not, you're not the next to go. They are. There's no room for true believers on that bus. So I, you know, I watch, I, you know, they've tried to have several nuclear wars, by the way. God stopped all of them. So you see, I'm comfortable because my Lord protects me, guides me. He tells me what's going on. I've seen him more than once hold back a nuclear war. Several times. Man, oh, oh and also biological war. He stopped that too. He's not going to let um, man do anything that he doesn't want him to do. So you can say man's going to do this, and we talked about the Antichrist yesterday, and I'm like, that's not my focus, but I understand how some people need that kind of narrative in order to, um, that's like an early stage of spiritual development. So you need that narrative to kind of, you know, uh, prophecy smack and end of the world, gloom and doom. There is no end folks, there is, you better, better get used to this idea. There is no end. This is all kind of a Western concept anyway. There is no end. And there is no beginning. Come on, Molly. Molly, this was the best word. I wish that I had the, uh, that I was on the other side of listening to this one. And if I turn on the radio and if I heard that, what I just said to you over the last whatever minutes, I would feel like, gosh, you know, I would feel a sense of comfort because I would know that I'm not crazy. You know, that all the thoughts that I've had, this guy, me in this case, just said them all. And I have no need to worry because my father loves me and loves you and, and he takes care of it. He's staved off these wars. And that, that if we are to go through a struggle, he's the one that's going to get us through that struggle. If there is going to be an EMP attack or a nuclear wave, then, then he would be the one who, let it, who released it for whatever reason he did. And he'll be the one to protect us and the guy to say, if he wants us to be a martyr, he'll make it so it's painless like Stephen. We just transition to another state. Fine. He's the finisher, the beginner, the ender of everything of our faith. And he's the one that guides us through. And our faith is what? What is faith? It's our life, isn't it? My faith is my life, right? My faith is my raison d'etre, as they say in Francais, uh, we, oui, that um, my reason of existence, it, my reason to breathe, the reason my heart beats, the reason I'm here is God because he put me here. And where I'm going is God because he'll take me there. I don't need to worry it's not on my shoulders where I need to go or where I came from or all the, the troubles of the world. They're not on my shoulders. They're on, it's a, because God's got this. So he's got me. He's got you. Everything's fine. Why do we worry so much? Hey, you, you Christians, why do you worry so much about all these horrible things? God is going to mete out justice to the bullies. Okay, I know there's a bunch of bully, psychopath thugs running the world. Molly's going crazy. She's just trying to get, to get Trish to get her out, let her outside because she knows I'm not going to do it. And Trish, it's, it's, the wee hours, it's the wee hours of the morning. 
and the sun hasn't even come up yet. I was up at 2.30 this morning, and uh, I was working at 2.30 a.m. in the studio today because I had to, I had to lock that. You know, I, I just, I realized that, that you know, at, you know, I've realized some things, and, and, and one is that, that some, you know, people don't understand in in the mixing business, it's ignorance. People are ignorant of mixing. They think, you know, you can just uh, push this frequency up or do that or do this or tweak that. Or t you can't tweak anything. Everything is a remix in mixing. If you want more more level out of something, then other things have to be taken away. Then you go, well, the other thing was taken away. You go, if you want that back, you're going to lose this over here. And, and you know, people make compromises, you know, when, when they make records, that they can't feature everything all the time or it would just be mud. And so, you know, so this is the problem that I've run into, that, again, it's ignorance. Um, it's, uh, you know, people are ignorant of, they think if they're, uh, you know, someone may know music, but they don't know, you know, when you make a record, there's a whole engine, there's a science to it, you know, and it's all, there's only so much room and frequency, and you can only do so many things. And, you know, if you want the drums featured more, then your bass will set back. If you want your bass more, then your drums will be back. If you want the, the, the piano more, then you're going to have your voices back. If you want the voices more, then everything else comes back. And they're just choices you make, and that's why they're faders. So you can feature different things at different times, and that's what people do, you know. But, but everybody lives with compromise, whether you're Bruce Springsteen or whether you're, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to say Ringo Starr. Well, I just said a Ringo Starr. Oh, God, the guy cracks me up, even though he's just such a, such a, a lightweight, you know such a loser so such a such a fool but you know it's uh, i guess he likes to appear happy go lucky uh but but uh you know he sings and he you know you got to pay your dues if you want to sing the blues is what he said and so i my answer to him was well so when are you going to pay your dues or do you want to sing the blues to me paying your dues is <laughs> in this life is you pay your dues to the Lord, not to the devil. You know, you, the devil's due, uh, sorry, it's to the Lord. And you, you give to the Lord and then the devil comes after you. And then as you're persecuted and come near death and have a near death experience or get, uh, or get hurt or, you know, in some way, then you're paying your dues because you went to the Lord and now you get persecuted, that's dues, that's your dues in life. No, that's not dues just for a Christian. That's your dues in life, to find the truth, and then they throw rocks at you. And that's paying your dues. So I would say to Ringo, so when are you going to, are, are you going to pay dues, and do you want to sing the blues? That would be my question to Ringo Starr. When are you going to pay your dues? Just life sorrows is not enough. You know, I lost my brother. I lost my parents. I lost friends. You know, have passed on, Right. Yeah, and people I loved have passed on, and people I didn't love have passed on. But, you know, I, people that I was involved in relationships with, a lot of many have passed on. Um, that's not paying my dues. Um, the IRS at one point, um, I had an audit, and back in the 90s, it went for like five years, and they kept threatening to take everything. You know, they were really mean. And uh, eventually we got it straightened out, and we were totally exonerated. And we didn't do anything wrong. You know, they just had a, you know, it was like they were, they, they, it was much worse than Sarah Palin's father got, I can tell you that. You're talking, I think five, maybe even seven years of year in, and, and our accountant was just so patient with them. And, um, you know, such a fluke that we, we were able to, to resolve this issue. It was a miracle of God. But it was a persecution thing because we, you know, we were a certain kind of people and they were sicked on us by people that we had worked with. They were the, they were the ones who betrayed us and turned us in. And um, they, uh, they took glee in that. And, uh, and it, it led to a real mess. But it, we were persecuted by the IRS for political or, or reasons that had to do with the kind of people we were, let's say. And, um, you know, they just targeted us. And... Uh, so, you know, that kind of thing, if, it's, if that's the case, if it's because I'm a Christian, because I'm a, 
a lamb of God because I'm a certain kind of, then that's paying your dues. But uh, just getting an audit's not paying your dues. Um, getting a sickness is not paying your dues. Uh, having uh, reversals and people uh, reject you and, and, and have divorces and, and breakups is not paying your dues. You may have sorrow and everything. You don't start paying your dues until you know what the truth is. I don't care how beat up you are. Even if you lose your life, it's still not paying your dues. The bottom line is you're paying your dues when you know the truth. It's all about the Lord, about Yahweh, about the Creator. And you throw yourself into Him because you know that you have no purpose here other than His purpose. So you give up through your own free will your purpose uh, to, to then be given a purpose. And the minute that happens, it's called the, the third ring or the consummation of the marriage. When the, you have the consummation of the marriage and you know who you are in Christ, which is, um, I've always been, you know what I mean? You, you just reawaken, the amnesia goes away. The minute the amnesia goes away, then they have the green light to attack. And when they do, that's paying your dues. But not until then. Otherwise, it's relativistic. It's narcissistic. It's like, look at them pick on me. E oh, I hurt. Ouch. I'm, at least I paid my dues. Not quite. When you're persecuted, when you're harmed for Christ, now, now, you know, and then you give glory to God and even rejoice over it. Now that is paying your dues. And that is the thing God wants. He wants you to rejoice when it hurts. And I, as I've gotten older, I've actually done that from time to time. Not consistently as, I, as you know, I'm sure others in China and the underground church in the Middle East and different places are probably much better at it than me, but I've been very calm in the face of death. I mean, I've been tested that way and I knew I, I was with my Lord and I was just at peace. And the most recent one was this, this first flu we got, which was not even a flu. It was beyond pneumonia. You know, it was beyond anything I'd ever seen. And it was completely had features that had no bearing on anything prior. And we weren't contagious to other people. That was the other weird thing. So I don't know how we got it. But uh, there, was a, there was a moment there where I was just like, you know, am I going to pass? You know, I didn't know. And I was tested. And I was, you know, and I had this peace about me. And uh, that's when I knew right then and there that so anything that would be leading to death that would be coming my way, you know, uh, things could be scary, like someone coming after you with a gun or something or a knife. But, I mean, you know, in being slain, if that happens, or any kind of disease or being overcome or succumbing in some way, you know, when you know you're going to the Lord and you're able to be calm in that situation, I think also in that situation is if you have that peace, then you can also fight back if you have to fight back and, and, and be in the, in the zone, right, in that calm zone where you don't panic. But, you know, the test was, was I going to panic? Because most people, I think if they were where I was and they couldn't breathe or anything, they would panic and run to the emergency room rather than rely on God for the cure, which is what I did. And I'm, you know, so I was happy that I passed that test because it, it had been about two years since I was tested before where I came close to death uh, from being poisoned. And then, you know, it was a, just, that was a terrible situation. In fact, then it happened uh, right after that too to Trish and me. And that was somebody that, a very evil person that we know that, that, that did it and then we had proof later. And, um, you know, and they were a witch. Yes, and they, they, they had a little cauldron and they stirred it up in there and they, they spiked our food, yeah. Nasty, huh? Brother Thomas had warned me about that. He said, that's, I said, yeah, that seems to have happened a few times and he, he warned me. He said, that's a, he's very, pre, he's very aware, this guy. He's very, uh, it's amazing how accurate he is. You know, it's really, truly amazing. But that was one thing he told me right off the bat in the beginning of knowing him, he said, you know, that's something to watch out for. And I'm like, wow. And it turns out that he was completely accurate in that. And, and then the Lord uh, was true to his word and, and, uh, because we should have been dead uh, many times over. I mean, that's enough to kill 50 people. 
And, um, you know, we survived. So remember in the book of, of Mark, you know, there's, there's no poison that will overcome you. God promised that in his word, and it's, he's been 100% true. I'm not saying that if they gave me an injection of some horrible thing that he, that wouldn't take me out or, you know, like Breitbart got poisoned in some way, right? And he was poisoned uh, maybe at the bar he was at in Brentwood or something. His face turned really red, so I don't, there's, there's to me, that, that's an earmark of, you know, a mark of poisoning. And then the coroner got killed too, so uh, that was a pretty simple hit, and it was because he had some kind of video on Obama that he was going to release, so the bad guys, you know, you know, the covert guys, you know, the black ops guys, some, you know, so they went ahead and took him out. So Obama, by the way, I, I, Obama murdered him, is what really happened. But by proxy, like the drone is by proxy, the Muslim Brotherhood killing of Christians by proxy, Breitbart by proxy, um, you know, and they, they, they do this all the time, you know, whether it be the Clinton administration, Bush, Obama, in uh, all of them. You get anything on the president and, uh, and, and you, you know, you haven't shared it publicly and you, you know, you say you've got info. His mistake, in my opinion, was to go public and say, I've got something, I'm going to release it on a certain date that's going to be devastating to the re-election of the president. And it's like, you're tempting, that, that's, that was dumb. You know, no offense, I love Andrew Breitbart, but, you know, and I, and I read his book, and I, you know, I really uh, admire him. But, yeah, I admired him, and, and I, it's tragic, and I was so sad when he, when he was, was killed. And then they covered it up, and they said it wasn't a murder, and then people... You know, like Bill O'Reilly come out and say, if you believe any of this conspiracy stuff, you're just a, a loon. And, you know, I don't know if O'Reilly commented on him, but, I mean, they, they bring guys like O'Reilly out to cover it up. But we knew. We were actually in L.A. at that time. We were, we were maybe, you know, five miles from where he, he got killed. And, you know, the other weird thing is he was going to the bar in Brentwood, and, uh, you know, he was obviously walking distance from, like, San Vicente or wherever he was. And, uh, you know... He, um, which was so strange, he was going to meet some liberals there. Liberal people. I'm like, why? That, that seemed weird. You know? And uh, because they wanted to see him or something. You know, it was like he was kind of lured there. And, um, you know, these are all people that want to see the president reelected, and he's got this info. So you wonder, you know, and then whoever did the hit, are completely exempted above the LAPD, above the law. Coroner got hit, no investigation, LAPD. It was the most bizarre thing. It was like Ronnie Chasen. I don't know who she pissed off, but she was an agent in Hollywood and represented people like Cher and, you know, Jeff Bridges and, you know, some pretty big people. So she's driving a Mercedes on Sunset, going to take a left on Whittier. And um, Whittier is, uh, you know, it's, it's in the Beverly Hills. It's... It's almost leaving Beverly Hills into Homie Hills and 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 into Westwood, and Brentwood and and uh, and rather uh, Bel Air, and um, you know it's at the end and it's in a residential area even though Sunset's a four lane street. Okay, it's far away from downtown Beverly Hills. You you'd have to go down several blocks to get back to down. It's it's almost leaving Beverly Hills. In fact, it is leaving. It's within half a mile of being out of Beverly Hills on Sunset, going west. And then Beverly Hills goes east from where she was turning left all the way back to Doheny, and then it turns into the Sunset Strip after Doheny. So that would be several miles of Beverly Hills residences, both north and south of Sunset. An all-residential area. No city anywhere. Far, it would be a long bike ride to go from down in L.A. up to, to, to uh, the corner of Whittier and Sunset. Nobody would just sit there waiting for a random car, and ride a bike all the way over there. Um, but this guy was. And, you know, and if the, LA, if the Beverly Hills Police Department saw you hanging around on a bike at 12 at midnight, they would pull you over. So hanging around there, then when you turn left, there's only a certain amount of time before the left arrow comes on. So he would have gone over to the middle of the street before the left arrow, where, where he could get run over, this guy, on a bicycle, and shoots her. She completes the left turn and goes a little ways and crashes into a light post. 
okay? But he's hanging out on Sunset Boulevard, which he could get run over because you can't see very well. Um, so, you know, um, then everyone covered up. And they, they, they had that, uh, that one guy, um, America's Most Wanted, all that stuff, and they all exonerated. They all said there was no, nothing there. The guy rode his bike from these apartments in Hollywood, which would have been, I don't know, 20 miles away, 10 miles away anyway, long ways away, to this remote part of Beverly Hills on sunset in a residential area at random where there's not that many cars at that hour of the night anyway, to wait for someone to rob there of all places. Now, you could say, well, because rich people are there, and so you wanted to rob someone rich. Uh, it, it just doesn't pass the smell test. I'm sorry. And I was one of the only people that did an analysis, right, because, because where she crashed was like um, half a block from my mother's house. So I was out there, and I saw the place where the car had hit, and, and, and they had a little memorial there for her. And, um, you know, it was so bizarre that it, and I asked if, if anyone heard it now. That, that was, you know, some years ago. And then I did some, some kind of talk about it, and, and, and I tried to do some, you know, some video and different things. And, and apparently um, I was a lone voice. It got covered up. Nobody cared. They deemed it uh, her own family. This is very similar to the Michael Hastings thing. Her own family, I think in this case her brother, uh, deemed it um, a, a random act of violence. And Ronnie Chase was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. Come on. So her own family and everybody else jumps on this idea that this guy just rode his bike there and was waiting for someone like her to show up, and it didn't matter if it was her or anybody else. He went up and, and it, but, oh, he didn't even rob her, right? He shot her, and then he didn't follow up by riding his bike after her when she crashed. He didn't even rob her. And they said the motive was robbery. So, okay, say so it's a mafia hit. Uh, you know, the brother was, everyone was told, you say anything about this and you're going to be next. So they all shut up, and the LAPD did their investigation and completely uh, and, and, and concurred. Corner investigation on, on Breitbart concurred. Everything gets swept under the rug in L.A., everything. L.A. is one of the most corrupt cities, and I thought it was the most corrupt city, but apparently Washington, D.C. is the most corrupt city. According to the, what the word I received from the Lord, the most corrupt city in the history of man. More than Rome, more than, um, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, more than the mythical cities, of, more than Babylon, more than any other city in the history of all things. And so that, and so, uh, you know, so what are some of the things, you know, I mean, I feel like you, you need Ezekiel here, because Ezekiel would look there and say, look, I see all the abominations. Well, they're so bad that, um, that you know, they can't really be mentioned. But yeah, those kind of things go on inside the beltway. They are doing their, uh, you know, they don't need to go out in the woods in the grove to do their, their thing. They, they can do their thing underground in underground chambers and luxurious settings and whatnot. Um, they have their eyes wide shut stuff going on. Um, eyes wide shut was very accurate. Um, that's what, what was going on in L.A., and that's what goes on there in Washington, and those are the people that run the world. They're all Satanist. And because of their conscience are seared, they're all psychopaths. And you can either be their victim or you can have victory in God, but, you know, you can't get it on your own. Or you can join them. You have, like, three choices. Marriage is three rings. You can betroth yourself to the devil and then you have the, the public marriage to the devil and then you have the consummation, which is killing someone. No, sexual ritual is not 
consummation with the devil. Um, that that may be some kind of rite of passage for, you know, um, young people like becoming, you know, reaching puberty and then betrothing themselves to the devil through doing some act of self-corruption. I won't take it any further than that. You can use your own imaginations if you like. Uh, to me, it all, it's all disgusting, despicable. But yeah, that goes on. But that's not the consummation. That's a rite of passage, which people say, oh, you've now, you, you're now an adult. You're now a man. You know, it's like, oh, really? <laughs> nope, you're not really emancipated until you kill someone. And then, and, and you can do it by, you know, ritual or, you know, causing someone to have an accident and getting credit for it. You know, there's all kinds of ways, but that's really the, uh, the rite of passage. And then that's the consummation. That means you are, because they have to cover it up, so you're a Satanist for life. That's it. You're betrothed, and you get married publicly, you know, self-corruption, right? And then there's the consummation. And after that, you can't go back. You've reached the point of no return, as the band Kansas says, and there is no going back. There is no going back. Waiting around for these people to repent on their deathbeds is a waste of time. There is no going, they're not going to do it because they don't want their children or grandchildren to get hurt, usually. And that's amazing for people that have lived so selfishly. You know, but it's like the, fam the pride in the family line. And the people that have the biggest families and the family lines are um, all, you know, here of the devil. And I don't know why that is. I remember sitting in the, I had a little study. I used to write scripts and novels and things back in uh, L.A. And uh, I had a friend over who was a producer. And, and he had this um, guy producing with him who had all this money, you know. And he just had tons of millions of dollars. And uh, he came to L.A. from England to, uh, to he had been in international films, but he had come in with a lot of money and he wanted to, buy up a lot of films and he was producing say three or four or five films at the same time you know it was kind of you know a mogul I said who is this guy he goes well his father is a lord and then he, he, he went to this page online of the 25 top satanic families right who are satanist and he was ranked like number 20 or something this guy the, the father of this of this guy he was working with and I said, wow, they actually have a ranking. I don't even know what side I went to, but he was like, they had a ranking of these uh, top individuals, not families, but in, not family names, but individuals. Um, and they actually, you know, were ranked and they were actually royalty. So it was, you know, kind of gives you... Um, confirmation of what David Icke's been talking about, but yeah. So all of the crowns and all of these powers and all of this stuff goes back to this worship of Lucifer. And, you know, to be a black sheep in the family would be that you have morals, or you're of God, you know, you'd be a traitor then. And it, it's just the most bizarre thing, but that's what I found. I found that with all the elite families that I had known that they all were beholden to the devil. And then my mother confirmed it. She told me, you know, she, she was, you know, thank God she was honest with me from time to time, even though, you know, we had, you know, she was angry that I didn't, that I didn't bow down to the devil as well. She was very mad about that. But at time, there were lucid times, you know, where she was kind to me. And, you know, during those times, she'd say, well, you know, what about those old friends you had, Mom, you know? And what happened to them? And he says, oh, honey, they've all gone to the devil, she'd say. All of them. Yeah, in other, but it's more like they were running with the devil, but then the devil collects. See, the devil will collect by the end of your life, and then all of a sudden you start getting sick and miserable or bankrupt, and a lot of them went bankrupt. I said, Mom, how come they went bankrupt if there was say I thought Satan took care of... Uh, the wealthy, you know, and these were wealthy people. These were people that had houses in Beverly Hills and, you know, memberships to the country club and, uh, you know, uh, second homes in Palm Springs and, and, and uh, you know, and that kind of thing. Nope.
I went broke. I'm like, well, what happened? The, well, they went to the devil, and then the devil collects. You mean at some point in your life that you could get all this wealth from the devil and then it gets reneged on at right when you need it for medical bills? Yep. God, that's terrible. And uh, don't, don't, hey, hey, don't kid yourselves. You take a look at uh, the celebrities out there who are also very wealthy and then, and then look at some of the where are they now where they've gone broke. They ran with the devil and it paid for a while and then all of a sudden the devil reneges and leaves them high and dry. And this happens, and I've been trying to explain to people about the rock thing, about the 42 months, that, you know, that, that I can trace it back. Jim Morrison, you, you name it, um, you know, Led Zeppelin. You know, it's, it's, it's more minor in other people. Led Zeppelin, the tragedy was they lost a drummer. You know, I mean, but, 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 but there was like, there, there's also a, a, like a three and a half year period of brilliance. And then it's not the same afterwards and it was different before. And then it just unwinds. And then, you know, um, so I've, and people envied all these rock stars. I'm like, don't envy, look what happened to these people. And then, you know, you have people like Kurt Cobain and Lane Staley of, uh, you know, of, uh, well, that was a cult band, but they, uh, Alice in Chains, that could have been a really good band. But I mean, all this, you know, all these things, you see there was brilliance for a certain period of time, and then they try to get back together, you know, for a reunion, it doesn't quite work. But there was this period of time, it's like a, a, a shining time of 42 months. And I think we can do the same thing with athletes and see the same kind of thing with that. There's this three and a half year period and then there's um, like a dwindling time of seven years and then there's this getting stripped of everything time. Now that doesn't happen with everyone, you know. Um, there's a lot of people that still worship the culture. I, I kind of feel like you know, where you have to be is, you, ju you just have to be beholden to the Lord. You've got to be like, you have to have your head in the clouds. You have to not want anything here. The Lord, the Lord has beaten that out of me. I, I, earlier in my life when I was writing lots of screenplays and, and, you know, trying to get these, you know, movies done, and uh, well, that was a really a real hassle, not easy to break into the Hollywood thing. I mean, if you're not going to put out, you know, if you're just, if you're going to keep your soul intact, it's almost impossible, you know, unless you, unless you sell your soul. But then even if you do, there's no guarantee. And at the most, you're like good for a short period of time before you get knocked out because you do reap what you sow. I think that's what's really happening there. The devil can, can maybe boost you for about three and a half years. And then, you know, what the politicians do, what some of the celebrities do is they'll do a, they'll, they'll go do a ritual. They'll find out what they have to do to keep, keep current, give the devil his due. And, and, you know, it's like, so they, what, they kill people? And then you hear about this guy that was the producer of the gong show and he was like a hit man for the CIA before he became a producer in Hollywood. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, gosh. Can you imagine having to do hits in order to, to then be a movie producer? And then, the, the, and then to, to be looking over your shoulder, taking all kinds of drugs to, 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 to squash it down because they're going to come for you some, at some point. People do anything for their fame and fortune, including not just sell out, but I mean do nefarious criminal acts in order to get in. And then they only need to realize that then they get done in and betrayed too. And the whole sad world works like that. You know, not just with the obvious celebrities, rock stars, athletes, but the whole world that works that way. You know, when you go to the devil and you get the benefit of the devil's thing and you give the devil his due, you're only good for a certain period of time before you got to go back, jack, and do it again. And again, what, what, what I'm talking about here is... Um, again, I'm not talking about, you know, people think, oh, there's a... You participate in this, in this rituals and you have orgies and it's, you kill a, a goat or something and drink the goat blood and, hey, what do you take drugs and it's just a free-for-all. It's like, no, no, no. It's based on, you know, hitting the enemy of the devil, hurting the enemy or killing the enemy 
in exchange for a pop and some more fame and some more fortune. And most people who are moral, they just can't do that. So the devil comes collecting. Or someone else has to sacrifice somebody or do something evil on your behalf so that, so that the benefit of their dirty work goes to you for another run of three and a half years or whatever it is. But that didn't help. Um, you know, I, I take a case in point of Led Zeppelin band when they hit the the height at the fourth album about 1971, and so and then after that it was a slow death of the band, and the and the music got was not anywhere near what it was during that three and a half year period, and then you know and then losing the drum, you know, death, death and tragedy, and then and then the solo career, and then it never really got back on track. It was over. And then you say, well, how, how can you explain the Rolling Stones? And I'm like, well, I can't explain that. I, you know, obviously, you know, my, my view of them is I think there's probably some, I don't think they're doing bad things to people because uh, otherwise they would reap what they've sown. So, you know, I think that a lot of the Rolling Stones is just an image thing of the bad boy, the rebel, or what. The odd thing about, to me, the Rolling Stones are conformists, not rebels. They're doing the obvious, just kind of playing rock and roll music and, you know, trying to act like they're rebellious and cool and tough and street tough and all that, and uh, wearing pirate type makeup and, um, you know, trying to act like they're, you know, that being bisexual is really macho or whatever it is. And it's just, you know, it's just all an act. You know, that's the way I look at it. It's just like the Rolling Stones to me, are just, they're not really musicians at this point. It's more like a circus act. But they did do some good music. They did have that three and a half year period, too, that was excellent. And then, then it, it seemed that it's been kind of treading water ever since. And if that's what floats your boat, fine. If that's, maybe that's their religion. I don't know. I know someone that knows Keith Richard, and I know that he is a uh, completely the opposite of what he really is on stage or trying to be the bad boy. He's really quite, uh, you know, he's a seeker. You know, he's seeking truth. So, you, you, don't, you know, appearances, you can't go by that. But I'm talking in certain kinds of generalities. You know, you can, and you, you know, maybe it's the rock and roll stars are too, they're too uh, obvious. And celebrities like actors and things are too obvious, but maybe uh, you have to look at um, you have to look at uh, maybe less obvious people. And so I asked, you know, early on, I asked my mother, why do why do these people play all these? If they're going to end up losing, why do they play the game then? It's like because they want money and they want social acceptance and popularity. And they want to be healthy and well-liked, and they want to be loved. And this offers all of that instantly. And gets the accolades of the Queen of England. And you get to be Sir somebody, or, you know, if you, if you really make the big time as an entertainer, let's say. Um, you know, the reward is you become Sir or whatever, because it shows that you're, you know, you've done it by the rules, which is, you know, by the power of Satan. So here we are in this backwards world where, and, and all these people, like the queen and all these, they all act like they're God-fearing people and they go to church and everything. You know? <laughs> it's amazing. It, it's truly amazing. I, you know, I'm looking forward to leaving, you know, because I don't really relate to it here much. I don't know about you, but um, it's, inter it's very interesting, you know, but the longer I've lived, the more I've felt that I really not only don't belong here, but I'm, you know, there's nobody does because of, like I say, the transitory nature of, of reality. But the more it seems like I'm kind of uh, on a field trip from class and I'm taking, you know, anthropology notes or scientific notes, or bio biology notes, and, and watching the bipeds and what the bipeds are doing here on the earth and, you know, documenting it to take home. You know, and I've done, given a lot of thought of, um, you know, the sort of nod, wink, satanic 
thing and how people cope with it, how, how different people cope with it differently. Some people just go, yep. You know, or the, like the Geico commercial, I'm going to stand up to her next time, you know, the witch is flying around and the guy goes, no, you're not. And he goes, you're right. <laughs> and so it's like, you know, they learn that that deal kind of works and, and, and everyone's done it. And, and so it's all one big happy family, uh, not, not. And um, so it's kind of like, you know, it's like taking steroids to get an edge in, uh, in weightlifting or in athletics, you know, taking uh, growth factors or growth hormones uh, to have an edge on your competition. You know, this is a, you can take a shortcut and you can have all the, you can have a real, a real start and you can get ahead and you can get, you know, use all that to get settled and have a family. And so, I mean, what's wrong with that? You know, Steve Miller even said that it's like flying like an eagle to the sea, uh, which to me was like a metaphor for uh, going the way of Satan. Because he said you could feed the babies, feed the children. Oh, there's a solution. And I just thought, oh, okay. So you think that um, flying like an eagle in, in the spirit, you know, your spirit soaring high, but loosing the bonds as, as uh, our friend wrote in his song. And, uh, you know, let your spirit soar high like an eagle. And that will feed the children, and everyone will be happy. And there are people that actually believe that, that if we all just followed the Pied Piper and let our spirit soar and loosed all the bonds and morals and everything and just allowed ourselves to be free uh, in the flesh, that uh, all the children would be fed. Just like the pastor said, if you will just do this, then the coffers will be full. And our church will be able to, to, to thrive. And, I, and I'd say to all these people, I said, you, you know, don't you understand that if you kill yourself, you're dead? That if you sell, sell your soul, you don't have it. That if you dance with the devil, you're, you're you know, risking uh, the end of your life. You know, in other words, you become dead. You become a hologram. You become uh, possessed. You become... Something else takes you over. You're not yourself anymore. You're not there to enjoy the fruits of your selling out, if you will. It's not you. It's someone else there. You, 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 you've been duped. You've been suckered. You know, and, and you think that, that there is no way it works out. I, I already told you what happens when you get older. Um, it just, it's hell on earth. Well, you know, I've gone over and over and over and over and over this. I've looked at it from every possible angle you could look at it. And, you know, I've been right the entire time since I was like seven. And so I've, I'm still right today. And it's never going to, you know what, with me, the truth of this whole thing has never changed from day one. My perplexity is looking at the human population and gauging how many have gone that way of the devil. And, and of course, they say there is no such thing, and, and, I, and I'm an atheist, and blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? I'm politically correct. Um, but it's amazing to me. If it's so obvious what happens to them and what happened to their parents and what, hap and what happened to their grandparents, it's just so obvious to me. Um, but they said, you know, I don't care. I want the short term. You know, I'm looking at this short term. I need a leg up. I can't survive. I'm getting crushed. I'm like, okay, well, I understand. I've, I've, I've spent my entire life trying to comprehend it. I mean, if I had a guarantee that it was going to be all through life and eternity and you know, that it wasn't going to go away. That, you know, I mean, if, I, if someone told me, yeah, and after like about four years or five, you're going to have to kill somebody or do something hor horrible or lie to a grand jury or do something, but then you get to pop again. I'd say, hell no. You know, I've I, I, I got to find another. That, that's just not acceptable. <laughs> you know? And then to watch them lavishing themselves on television, you know, being so proud of themselves, and then acting like, oh, shucks, I'm really humble. 
I'm amazed. I, I like, dude, does the person that was originally that person have any idea of the duping that's going on here, of, of the absolute um, sham that has happened? And the answer is no, man. Money talks, BS walks. You know, it's like, you know, money, fame, fortune, that's, that's a, a, what it's all about. And it's like, you know, as long as that's being offered, that they're gonna, it's going to be the gold rush. And they're gonna, the, the fools are going to rush in, and, and then they're going to complain, like I remember at my, my father's funeral many, many years ago, how his friends had all lost all their money, and they were all complaining, and they're crying, and they're sick, and they're, it was sad. I never asked them. I just wondered, you know, I wish I'd asked one of them, you know. But if you had to do it all over again, would you have done it differently? And I, I already know the answer. The answer is no. I, I would have done it exactly the same, you know. And, and screw you for trying to uh, judge me. I'm like, no, I'm not judging. You. I'm just wondering if if this was all worth it. Now that you're in the waiting room to die yourself, and your family's abandoned you, nobody cares about you. Your phone doesn't ring. And now I'm just wondering if you would have done it. Oh, you mean had I had I done it differently? You think there'd be anybody to to hang out with now? Well, you could at least, in the spirit, you it's quite populated. There is no loneliness in the spirit. But um, my conclusion, and I've already concluded this, and I'm not going to discuss this anymore. But my conclusion is they would do exactly the same thing. It wouldn't be like the rich man and Lazarus. That they all would do it exactly the same, they, and they've basically pretty much indicated that. The complaint is that it didn't last longer. And had it lasted longer, you know what I mean? They would get, they, there wouldn't be anyone here on earth for God at all. It's that tragic end that kind of keeps some people from going that way. Me, it was, I just was always about philosophy and stuff, and I just can't imagine um, hurting people to, to get ahead. I, I, you know, I don't know. We all hurt each other. We don't mean to, you know, but I mean, and I feel bad when I get into scrapes with people and stuff. I don't like it. But in order to, to systematize it into, into some kind of science to boost yourself financially, um, you know, hurt, hurt a guy over here, go up over there. I, we see politicians do it, right? A, a crisis comes, they take advantage of it. And they might even cause the crisis so that they can then take advantage of it and boost themselves all the more. You see it all the time. And they, these people know what they're doing, and they know the God they serve. So anyway, that's my inspiring message for today. I, I hope that uh, I pray in Jesus' name for your complete deliverance from witchcraft and from persecution today and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm sorry that there's that all around us. Yeah, again, um, I don't know, yeah, I look forward to moving on. You know, I don't want to come back here. Uh, I've, I've seen a lot of things that I, I can't relate to. And uh, I understand if you're an earth dweller, you've got to, you know, you become a witch and you want to move things, you want to have control of your environment because you think this is permanent. So have at it, you know. I mean, that's your, if that's your mentality, you know, that's, the, you know, I'm not going to judge that. You know, I, I, I acknowledge that that's your mentality. You were made to be what you are. And I'm not going to judge you because, you know, God makes us all different. But it's just, you know, the sad thing for me is that people, they worship the earth and they think the earth is going to be there forever. It's, it's like, no. <laughs> you know, and then they want to get control of their environment. By the time they, they, you know, like I know this one older witch, by the time she finally felt she was getting somewhere, it all was stripped away from her. And I'm like, you can't win. You're going to reap what you sow. You might as well just repent for the Lord. Just give it up. Just go to Father. Go to Jesus. Jesus. Hey, I saw a trailer yesterday 
called The Son of God. Have you seen it? It's a, you can get it on YouTube, I guess. And they had, uh, it was about Jesus, you know, and it looked like they were doing it for real. It looked pretty awesome. I, I don't know. I'm going to see it on day one. I just love stuff like that. A lot of these biblical epics are coming back, but it looked like they were taking it seriously. They weren't mocking Jesus. It looked like they were trying to do a faithful representation of, of the gospel story and the story of Christ, you know, and through the, um, you know, like the book of Matthew or whatever. And they had John the Baptist in it, and um, they had um, Jesus look like a Jewish guy, you know, and it didn't look like a, uh, a, a waspy character, which was, which was like the, the complaint of all the Jesuses that had gone before. They were all very Gentile looking. And um, so, you know, we'll see. Um, I hope it's good. I felt a chill when I saw the trailer. It just really affected me. I felt a real, a real, like electricity chill all over me for about, and then when the trailer ended, I still kept lingering for a while, and I started crying, and then I stopped. You know what I mean? It brought me to tears. But it could have been I was just so desperate for a drink of water, you know what I mean, that when I finally got a little drink of water of seeing the Son of God, you know what I mean, it just made me tear up. And it could have been just the thought of Jesus made me tear up, not the movie. So I want to be very careful in saying that, and, and I'll hold caution on. I'm sure the, uh, there'll be people finding things wrong with it and publishing that it's of the devil and, you know, it's evil and don't go see it. And, and I hope that's not the case. I saw another film. I saw The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, and it's kind of a, you know, a nice little comedy. It's it, You know what? That's a nice movie if... If you just want to feel good and you don't want anything too heavy, you want to have a little escape and you want to, you know, it's basically about not, you know, getting into a rut and not being afraid to go out and, and experience life. And it was all about Life magazine and, and uh, it was very well directed by Ben Stiller and he plays the part, uh, does a great job in the role. I enjoyed it and Sean Penn was in it at the end and he was... I'm like, how did you direct him to be this sweet guy? He was like, wow, away from politics. He's, you know, he's, he's a great actor. And then he, like, when he was talking about Chavez and stuff, it just drives me up a, a, a wall. I, I, you know, it's impossible to deal with. But um, he played the part of a, of a life photographer who was still shot on film. And so there was that. It was just a sweet story, you know, it's two hours. It's not going to... But that's where I saw the, 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 the trailer for The Son of God. And I believe that comes out in April. I may be wrong on that, but I think it's April. And, um, I, you know, it's going to come out for, for uh, Easter during the time of Passover. That's when it's coming out. So I'm there day one. Now, we'll play on Thursday night at like 9.50 here. But I'll be day one. Day one for me would be that Friday it comes out you know, 11 a.m., let's say. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make the first showing and then, and then do a little bit of a review on it because I think it's really, a, you know, it's important. Uh, if someone's made a movie about Jesus, about Yeshua, you know, and, and, it's, and it's good, gosh, that would be, wouldn't that be wonderful? And, and the, the, then all the discussion about the Lord and getting our focus on, uh, on God and, and the Word of God, and just like in the beginning of this podcast. And then that's going to just force us all to really just go into it more and more and more because the, the happiness that you seek is in the Spirit. It's in Christ. It's in Yeshua. He is the doorway to another life, to escaping this. Because this is just, you know, it's... it's you, if I didn't have him, I think I, you know, if I didn't know, God was the thing that pulled me through. Otherwise, I would have killed myself already because I wanted out. You know, and now I realize I, I, I live on, not for myself, but I live on, you know, that he might use me to, to do stuff here. And I hope so. I hope I'm not so much in the way that it's just, you know. Because I do know there is nothing else. There is nothing else. The kingdom of God. That's where I want to go. And I want to just focus on that for the next few months. The kingdom of God. 
Absolutely, amen. The kingdom of God. I've spent so much time talking about Satan, politics, you know, the ins and outs of the devil, gang stalking, satanic ritual abuse, satanic abuse, and the numbers are staggering, the corruption in the churches, corruption in Washington, corruption everywhere. And it just gets so depressing, doesn't it? It's just terrible, you know. And, and then how many people went running that way? And it's like, ah, how many millions and billions went for the easy way out? And, and not easy. I mean, if the Satanists get you and they say, okay, join us, and you say no, then they can kill you. You know, So it's the, not the easy way out if you, you know, it's the easy way out if you say yes. That's why the band Yes was there. They could name themselves Yes so they could give you a coach, a, a, a little pointer. A, they could give you some coaching that if you say yes, everything's cool, right? See? So that's why they named the band Yes, so that you would say yes. <laughs> I just, I don't know. That's my speculation. And with that, it's time to take the garbage out. I'll see you next time. The things going on in outer space and all the, are there extraterrestrials and are there, are there people on Mars and the moon and what about Sirius and all that? What about all these UFOs? You want to know about that? No, you're tethered here by God. You're not supposed to know about that stuff because, see, we don't want you to have that technology because every civilization before you has perished in a holocaust because of it. Because man can't handle it, as it was said from the Garden of Eden and the expulsion. We must tether man, limit the years of his life, Keep him from technology lest he start becoming as gods, knowing, knowing the sciences or good and evil, meaning the sciences. Right? Okay, let's just back up. What do I mean by that? What is science? It's the quest for dot, 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 capital T, truth. Right? That's what science is. So that's why I said that. Don't want to leave anyone in the in the dust. It's a, you, no, it's fine. You know, it, it's fine. They're just uh, apparently people don't know this stuff, and it's kind of like, well, shoot, if you're going to sacrifice for the Lord, i.e., being you in this world, you receive persecution, right? Oh, no, you don't. But if you're you, separate from the world by Jesus, baptized by the Holy Spirit, and and sitting in the, in the hand of God on the earth, they're going to jump on you, right? No. <laughs> well, then I contend that you're still in the world. Because the minute he takes you, they jump on you. And they'll try to kill you. And they'll do all manner of things. And what you learn is you learn to rely on God. You will learn to rely on the Lord. And the Lord alone for uh, protection, provision, sustenance, health. Um, lots of lambs of God have gone the AMA route only to wind up dead. You know, it's, it's the spirits that operate there are stronger than the doctors and the nurses. So what do those spirits want to do? They want to kill just like Herod, all children of God worldwide. What's Obama doing? He's persecuting Christians by proxy through the, his, his Muslim brotherhood and killing them. He is a murderer. Eat, uh, you know, wheat and make bread and, and grains. But it's the flesh that's cooked, that gave the, the sweet savor of meat, that's considered special. That's a special feast. You don't bring in grain for that. I mean, you have bread along with it, right? Like at the, uh, at the Last Supper, we have lamb and bread, right? Why lamb? Because what's the blood of the lamb? 
what is the Lamb? You know, it's amazing how we've been through this for years, but we uh, seem to have lost our way on this stuff. Lamb, it's in the innocent, okay? A little lamb is an innocent one, you know, like a little Bambi, you know? But it's, it's an innocent one. You don't want to kill that lamb, just a baby. What does a lamb grow into? A lamb grows into a sheep. So the lambs are little and the meat is good. Good for a sacrifice because that's the most precious, the little lamb. Right? That's the most innocent, the little lamb. The little lamb doesn't eat flesh, eats grass. Right? The little lamb. Vegetation, whatever. Anyway, the, the point is, is that Jesus is the lamb, capital L. Then there's the wrath of the lamb. How can a, a lamb be wrathful? Lambs are innocent and sweet. What do you mean the wrath of the lamb? You mean the identity of the innocent one that was sacrificed is really the almighty God, i.e. the wrath of the lamb? Holy smokes, what have we done? Uh, you won and you lost. Man lost, God won. Thank God. Man, another word for man is ignorant one. Ignorant one. Man is the ignorant one. He'll sacrifice God thinking he's getting a trophy. He's so stupid. Man is like the lamb. His legs have to be broken or he'll wander right off the cliff. So the shepherd must break man's legs, keep man tethered, because if man had the powers of God, I'm jumping all over the scriptures right here, if man had the power of God to be his gods and to be eternal, he would go tear up the universe and screw it all up, would he not? So keep him tethered here, hard, upon the earth. You wonder why you're tethered here and why you can't see up in the firmament and all the questions you have about all the... Greetings in the name of the Most High, Yeshua, Son of God. Now, let us uh, indulge in just a bit of uh, Jesus and... Um, I, I really, uh, <laughs> I really need to get on with, uh, okay, that's where I want to go, right there. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Meaning that Jesus' words are the bread of life. And we, and we hear this, you know, repeated, especially in John. Um, this is Matthew, but especially in John where it says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you shall not see eternity. You shall not see the glory of heaven. You shall not enter in to the kingdom. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood... Again, and what, and what, was, the, what, what was the working metaphor... That this is the last sacrifice. And the last sacrifice isn't of flesh and blood, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Every word. And as we know, that doesn't just refer to the Bible, but the word one receives when encountering the scriptures. Prayer, inspiration, that's, you know, from outside yourself, receipt of the Holy Spirit, consummation of the wedding feast after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is the three rings of marriage. I gave you this word yesterday. This was a word from the mouth of God. Marriage is three rings. The Bible is in three parts, beginning, middle, and end. What's the middle? 
Jesus. Well, the, you could say that's the beginning, middle, and end, but I mean that the advent of the Son of God upon the earth, right? The fulfillment of the Word. The Word made flesh. Actually, you know, in a sense, uh, anyway, the, the, the light enters into the darkness, and the darkness comprehends it not, because darkness is dark. Darkness can only amplify the light, uh, Barack Obama is, but then again, I guess you could make that case for most presidents. I don't want to make him more than anyone else. He's just the most dramatic example of uh, a total slave and uh, vapid. In other words, there's nothing, the, the same tape keeps playing around and around and around and it's so boring I can't, I can't watch anymore because he's just like a broken record going around and around and around. The latest is, I'm going to be a dictator and do what I can with my pen because you guys don't respect me. Boo-hoo, you know, around and around. The same tape over and over as painting himself as a victim of some vast right-wing conspiracy around and around and around when the whole point is he's on the winning side of the satanic left. Oh, there's a satanic right too, but I mean, you know, basically... The push right now is basically Democrats who are communists and, uh, and all of them are at this point. So it's, it's because the ones who weren't have become independents. They have left the Democrat Party like I left the Republican Party to become what? I became an independent in New Mexico. So I think for myself. Uh, and right now there is, as I said yesterday, there's a huge push for Satanism. I mean, in, income e equality, which is Satanism. Which is communism, which is Satanism. Communism is simply the external manifestation of structural Satanism. Uh, which is very ordered and structured. Which is also includes paganism and, and all that. It's all kind of included. The pagans don't really know the devil exists, a lot of them. Um... But the the ones who run it and control all the pagans, they do. But that's okay. Most of the people that are, they think that they're smart, they say they're atheists, and the people that control them are all children of the devil and, and, and believe fervently and do rituals to the devil. Even if their followers or the ones they control are too smart for that sort of thing. You know, it's amazing... The, the main thing I run into in, in life, whether it be Christians, uh, Buddhists, atheists, general people, is uh, incredible, uh, almost, uh, you know, an incredible array of um, confusion and ignorance. I guess that's what it would be, the, the bulk of people I, I run into. They're okay in their little niche, you know, like if they're a store clerk or, a, you know, if they're, you know, they're... It can give contrast so that the light shines ever more brightly the darker it is, which is why I believe the world is the way it is. Because how could we see the Son of God, the, who is also called the light? I'm emphasizing today because apparently there's some ignorance on this in the, in, in, among people that say they are believers, and I don't want you to get your head lopped off and not know what's going on. You know, if you're going to die for the faith, you might as well know what the faith is. What is it that you have to, to eat to survive? Man does not live by bread alone. Why did John have to eat the little book? What is eating the book about? Living on the word of God rather than living on off the flesh, living off the land, living off the off food, living off shelter, living off water, but rather dining on the spirit. That's why people fast so they can feast on 
the spirit and not the flesh. To align and identify with the spirit and not the flesh. Right? Because there's some ignorance on this point, I, I feel like I have to um, kind of be emphatic here because too many people have this idea that God is this distant thing and there is no feasting on the word, there is no eating the flesh or drinking the blood because eating flesh and drinking blood was a pagan ritual in the days of old. Oh, those pagans today wouldn't do something like that. Now would they? The lamb is also very symbolic. What's the lamb? The lamb is that which is sacrificed, the sacrificial lamb. What was the sacrifice during the Old Testament? Right? The sacrifice to the Lord God. Why? Why? The fatted calf, the fatted ram, the lamb. Why? Why, do you suppose? To offer God their best. Because animal husbandry was, right? And then, and then of course, it, it developed into crops. Give, remember, Cain tried to give crops, but God rejected it. He wanted, he wanted the fatted calf because that's considered better than just crops. They'll eat.